So we were called out to this building here in Los Angeles to source long-term water infiltration into our client's structure. Uh, what we found when we got there was soil levels which were above the weed screed, um, sloping of the exterior grade into the building, uh, rusted, deteriorated weed screed, penetrations into the building from, from things like li the line set from the air conditioning condenser, um, disconnects from the air conditioning condenser, junction boxes, all of these uh, components can lead to water infiltration into the structure. Uh, we also found some flashings which were sloped towards the building as, as, as opposed to being sloped away from the building um, over irrigation. Again, again, all of these components can contribute to, to water infiltration in the building. So inside the building we found mold, um, we found significant wood rot, uh, so much so that even some of the structural components of the wall, the exterior wall, actually had to be replaced um, because of the, the long-term damage uh, caused by this, uh, this water infiltration. So what you're looking at here is the soil level, which is above the weep screed flashing, the weep screed flashing being at the bottom of the wall. Uh, when the soil level is above that, uh, that flashing, there is the potential for water to make its way into the building. Um, the entire lower section of the wall um, was buried in soil. Uh, when that soil saturated, again, it, it is an easy way for water to make its way into the building. Uh, moving up the wall, you can see penetrations from things like this here, the line set from the air conditioning condenser, um, both uh, cracks around the flashing uh, junction boxes, all of these components attached to the wall do have the potential to let water into the building. Making our way into the building, you can see the effects that long-term water infiltration has on a wood frame structure. Um, the staining, the discoloration, the missing wood, Here's a, a complete section of sill plate that's missing on uh, the direct result of that uh, leaking through that uh, weep screed flashing that we showed you in that first clip where the soil was above that, uh, the bottom of the wall there. Here's the, the effects that water has leaking through the air conditioning condensing line set flashing uh, over a number of years. There's some other stains around it from some of the penetrations from the air conditioning disconnect uh, junction boxes, so forth. So the weep screed flashing is a flashing located at the bottom of a stucco wall. It allows for a stucco wall to drain. When soil is above that weep screed flashing, that process uh, may not happen. Water might back up inside the wall. Now also when soil is above the exterior side of the weep screed flashing, uh, it does potentially allow for that lateral migration of water from the exterior through the interior sill plate into the building. Yeah, I'll pull off that that just one bar, right? Yes. All right. So our first test is going to be of this connection right here, where that cap flash is. Uh, it's on a stem wall, and it's uh, pointing into the building, sloping into the building. Obviously, I think you can see it from here. So we're setting up right now. Go ahead, buddy. You're setting up the rack. We're gonna go ahead and start this test here. Probably about five minutes. To get it underway. We'll go on the inside and uh, we'll see what happens. So here is the water leaking in from our test of the cap flash. It appears to be leaking in through here. It's the bolt or a nail or a screw. Nevertheless, we're focusing our, our, our spray on the cap flash. The water's coming in through this location right here. Once again, water intrusion from the cap flash test. However, in this, this area here, it's just, it's coming in through the, uh, the bottom of the wall. 
So we already have water coming in within two minutes of the water test. It's coming in right here. Although we're testing the cap flashing right now, we're getting water coming in here. Very significant amount of water. After the test started, you can see water coming in through the flashing, actually. Not even through the penetration, which is where I thought it was going to come in, but actually from the flashing. From the bottom of the flashing. And from the junction box, you can see water starting to make its way in. From here, we're getting it in through the flashing. So right there. Now it's coming in pretty good around the junction box, penetration, running down the wall, and then here we still have the water coming in through the flashing, you can see it right there. And now we, now we have it coming in here as well, through the weak screen again, right through the weak screen, okay. So we'll go ahead and terminate this test before we make it any worse. So keep in mind, our job as specialists isn't to come into a situation and create any more damage than absolutely necessary. We don't add any more water than we have to to be able to replicate uh, or identify uh, leaks. Uh, we're hired by homeowners, by attorneys, by remediation companies, contractors to source or document uh, the location of water intrusion into a building. So, so when we arrive to a project, uh, there is a system to our methods. Uh, every single test that we performed is with precision equipment. It's all performed to either an AAMA or ASTM standard. So we're not just guys out there with a water hose just arbitrarily spraying everywhere to try to find or replicate leaks. Um, when, we, when we approach a building, there is a plan and there is a system to our methods to, to identify and isolate water intrusion into a building.